Yo, what's up guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I got a Star Guardian guide for you guys today. Let's go right into it. Um, a lot of people know how to play it if their composition's not contested. I'm going to show you how to play when it is contested because everyone knows how to play it when it isn't. This goes for most compositions because right now the meta is really all about just going a composition that no one else is going. Um, those are the people who are generally going to do well in every game. So with that in mind, let's hop right into it. Um, here's the meta snapshot where I have Star Guardians. Um, I had them in meme tier initially because no one was really playing them until this week. And this is pretty much the final build that you want with the Star Guardian Spatula. There are a bunch of builds without the Star Guardian Spatula, which I'll get into here. Um, you remove the Velkaz, you remove the Annie, and then you just end up playing six Star Guardian, including Poppy. Um, and then you eventually level up, put in a Mystic at level 8 if you have time to do that. Um, but that's pretty much the build. You just want 3-star Syndra, 3-star Ari. The basics of the build is pretty much just leveling up until level 7, and then at level 7, slow rolling. So slow rolling is rolling down to 50 gold every turn. So if you have 70 gold, roll down to 50. Next turn, you go up to 60 gold, roll down to 50 again, and look for 3-star Nico, Syndra, Ari, and sometimes Lux as well if you manage to find a lot of her. Lux is a really critical sorcerer because she provides a lot of crowd control with her ability. So with that in mind, let's get into the replay. All right, so we get into the replay here. I got a tier. Um, tiers generally, I don't even think tier is necessary to start the game with in order, in order to go star guardians. You obviously want tiers a little later. I think the most important item is probably a guardian angel for Nico and maybe one other item for her, such as Quicksilver Sash or Ionic Spark. But after that, you definitely do want the tier, so don't get me wrong there. But in the beginning of the game, you do want to be going tier because it prevents other people from going star guardian because they think tier is the most important item. So it's kind of like a weird dynamic there, in my opinion. But moving on from here, here I just pick up the two Kha'Zixes. I get a bunch of star guardians here, so I think I could consider going for them. Star Guardians isn't really something I'd force every game, but I would probably play it pretty often if it's not being contested. Um, we get a pretty good start here because it is the medium legends map and we have a Nico. Um, so over here, I'm going to pause for a second. I think the best thing to play here is just two Vanguard and uh, maybe the Yasuo since he's probably the strongest unit here. Not the best starting board, but we do get to play Guardian Angel on Mordekaiser, so that's a pretty good addition in my opinion. Not the best of starts, but it could be worse. You know, um, early Nikos isn't really something you want, but since it's a little Legends map, or sorry, the Medium Legends map where we get 25 more health, it actually is pretty good on this map getting Nico early because you could actually plan around it without getting punished. So normally if you get a Nico here, you're just down gold or an extra item over everyone else, but with the Medium Legends map, it doesn't matter because now you can play for a super late game and try to use it to snowball the game. Um, so we get a huge hit here. We get the Poppy and we get a more playable unit over the Yasuo um, by playing Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate I like more because I kind of want a range champion to complement my two vanguards, but the difference in power isn't really that much between Yasuo and... Um, I could have also played Shen, maybe that could have been possible as well, but I think I do want to make interest here. Um, I guess I could have afforded to make interest even though I could buy the Shen, um, so it's may have even been better to just play the Shen over the Twist of Fate. And so moving on to the next round, we had 10 gold for interest, so that's really good at this point in the game. And um, here I just throw in the Caitlyn because I want to play Kronos. Um, you don't really want to play Zoe for Sorcerers because Zoe is honestly a terrible unit. Do not play her when possible. <laughs> that's really all I have to say there. Um, we scrape out this round, luckily, so that's pretty good. That means we could start looking into getting a win streak going. And so the item we want here is probably Tier. Um, because we already have Garden Angel and we have a tier on our bench, so we just want to complete the item. Um, but we could go for pretty much anything, because we still need Quicksilver Sash, so I think, think that's what I end up getting here. Or sorry, I get the Rod. Looking back, maybe I wanted the Quicksilver instead, but... Rod's obviously always good in a Star Guardian composition, because I do want Rabidon's Death Cap on my um, Syndra or other carries. Uh, but that's weird. Looking at it here... On first instinct, I'd go QSS, but I guess since I don't have any damage items, um, the Rod's good as well. Or it might be better. Huh, I don't really know. I, I think Rod's better now that I think about it. Just because we already have a defensive item, so let's start building some offensive items. Yeah, it, it, it does make sense. Um, nothing too interesting in the shop there, so we could just skip through that. Um, over here, we get the Caitlyn, which is pretty huge. We also get the Sniper with Ash, um, so I think I end up putting that in here because Sniper's always going to be a lot better than whatever team I have now. Also, since I'm in a win streak, I think I do want to level up here. Interesting. I don't take the Ash. I think I really should have, because 
I don't really want to make interest here by buying the Zoe, so I could have just played Ash and Caitlyn combo over playing a Zoe, which would have been much, much stronger. So I do end up selling the Zoe there. Hmm. I am playing a lot differently than how I would normally do it. And I, I just played this game like 30 minutes ago, so I don't know what's changed too much. But I guess maybe I was thinking at the time I could sell the Zoe, because I don't really care if she's level 2 or not. It's not going to make a difference in in many games. You get like a half second stun longer, which is good, but it's not going to be game breaking by any means. I think I sell the Caitlyn here because um, I don't really need her. Interesting. Wow, I am not playing at all like how I was before. Always make the hat here whenever you are going Star Guardians because it's just one of the best items on them after Seraphs um, for Syndra. You, you ideally want like double Seraphs Rabbit on Syndra or like double Seraphs defensive item or Seraphs hat defensive item. Um, any of those combinations would work really well. So we did end up getting the glove, which is really, really good because you'll see how important Quicksilver Sash is. Quicksilver Sash is always important for your carries and also for your tank if you only run one tank. And in this composition, we really only run one tank. I don't really consider Poppy a tank because she's a one star or one cost unit and she's not going to have the Vanguard buff, so she's not going to be tanky at all. Um, by the time her shield passes, um, she's going to be dead already. It's really nice that we get the Velcos here because I, I see, you'll notice that a lot of the times I'm checking on the other Star Guardian player. I didn't realize it was being contested this early until, sorry, until this late. Uh, and you never really want to play this comp when it is contested because it's going to be a lot, lot weaker than, uh, than it could be. And you always want to check up on him. And whenever you see that it's being contested, you want to change up your strategy a little bit. So normally when you play Star Guardians, you go to level 7, you slow roll down to 50 every game. Not too much interesting play required there if it's uncontested. You're just going to do really well. Um, also, like I call this guy out. He's going Star Guardians with two bows, so I have no idea what he's doing um, with that item start. But I mean, he has a Seraphs, but that's really it. He has no defensive items for his main carry. Wait, let me just double check that. Yeah, he's got, he's got no defensive items for his main carry, and he has two bows, and he's still going Star Guardian. It, it makes you kind of wonder, you know? I know he has upgraded Syndra, but he really just recently upgraded it, so he committed after knowing that he had two bows already, because I think I remember seeing this when I scouted him beforehand. I don't know if that's like something he should really stick to, or if he was able to transition. Maybe he's just going to take the unlucky game, but if he knows I'm going it, and he still goes for that with two bows, it makes me kind of wonder if he even scouted. I don't think he did. Um, luckily, we get the QSS here. I just go ahead and build that right away, because if I'm playing Velkaz, I'm going to be wanting QSS. You don't play Velkaz if you don't get the Star Guardian item, but if I'm going such, something such as like Velkaz with Brawlers and Void, I'd want the QSS anyway, so I don't really lose anything from building it, because I'm going to build that on Nico or on Velkaz. And I might sell Velkaz here anyways. Uh, so we get the Nico there, so I just immediately sell the Mordekaiser. I popped the hat and QSS on Ash just because I don't really know who's going to get the QSS yet. Because um, it still could be my Velkaz if I end up playing him um, with Nico in the meantime. Because no one really has Zephyr in the early stage of the game. So you don't really need to worry about having Quicksilver on your tank until much later into the game. So here we find the Syndra and Ari. I'll be honest with you guys, it's a, late to be, it's a little late to be finding them at this stage in the game. So I am getting a little worried. I'm thinking I can't really 3-star... Um, the Syndra and the Ari, which is what you generally do want to do. So instead, now that I see that I got the Spatula item, I'm going to go ahead and make the Star Guardian item um, so I can make Velkaz a Star Guardian. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough yet, I don't think. So I roll down a tiny bit. I find the other Nico. Um, don't really need that yet, but I think I should be making, yeah. I make the star, six Star Guardian right now. I was really just looking for Soraka, but I don't want to kill my entire economy looking for her. It's much better just to build the... Um, Star Guardian item right away on Velka since it's probably one of the best items after you get the core tank items for Nico and one damage item for Syndra, which is what I have here. And I even have half the Seraphs for Syndra as well. You could also build the Chalice of Harmony, which I have on my bench. I decided not to build it yet because I think Seraphs is just too good of an item to risk passing up, and that's why I don't make the Chalice item right away. I could also use the Cloak for a second QSS for Velkaz, um, which is another good item as well. I do find a couple of Cinders here. 
Oh, do keep in mind, it might have been a mistake to put hat on Syndra because maybe I could have put the hat on Velkaz knowing that the other guy is going to contest me for the units. That's why I hesitate putting tier on Syndra here because if I can't get Syndra to 3-star, it doesn't really make much sense playing her. Um, just because I could just run a 2-star Velkaz carry instead, which is going to be much stronger than the 2-star Ari. Or sorry, 2-star Syndra. I probably should pick up Cho'Gath here, but I guess since I had double Nico already, or 2-star Nico already, it didn't really make too much sense quite yet to transition into Void Brawlers. I'd also have to find Kha'Zix, and since I'm level 7, it's going to be pretty difficult to do so. Here I want either the Trap Claw, the Jeweled Gauntlet, Brawler's Gloves, or the Luden's Echo. I really just want mana items or AP items. I think Gunblade would be fine as well. But I think Jewel Gauntlet's probably the best here. I end up getting it here, so that's pretty fortunate on my part. It's also on 5 gold, and being last pick, getting 5 gold and a decent item is always a win in my book. So here I'm thinking I want to hit level 8. So I noticed that he is level 7 and rolling down, and he's going to be wasting a lot of his gold because I already have a lot of the units. So instead, what I'm going to do, instead of rolling at 7, I'm actually going to go to level 8. Um, one thing to note is on the medium legend map, you can't really wait for your opponents to die. Normally on the normal map, you can wait for your the person contesting you to die and then roll for their units afterwards. But I can't really do that in this case because he's going to live for so long. So there's no way I'm going to survive if he's not dying um, quickly enough. So I actually level, level up to 8 and I'm trying to find 6 Sorcerer and just have a Velkaz carry to try to win the game. I think I do end up selling Syndra here for interest. Yeah, I end up selling her for interest there because, again, there are only 16 3-cost units in the pool, so he's going to get Syndra to level 3 because he is level 7, so there's a 40% chance for him to find all the 3-cost units. And that means he takes 9 of them out of the pool, which means it's impossible for me to complete the Syndra. Um, so that's why I end up selling her there, um, just to make the interest. There's still a chance I could find Nico because I have a lot of her. I guess he's looking for Nico as well. I think when I last scouted, he didn't have quite as many, though. Also, the Cinders are not really showing up for me either. Unfortunate here, I get the two bows like he does, but I got mine way later, so I'm already too committed to transition out of this composition. Extremely lucky that we hit the Velkos, and we also got the Quicksilver Sash on Velkos, which is one of the best items I could think of for him. So you'll notice here that normally you dump all these items onto either Ari or Syndra, but again, we have to remember... I'm not 3-starring any unit, so I want to give the, these items to the best unit I can, and I think that unit's actually Lux because she provides crowd control, and I don't really need the damage from either um, Syndra or Ari, so I'd just rather have the crowd control that Lux gives me by giving her the items. So here, from here, I'm thinking, we could slow roll here, right? But what are we really lo looking for? We're just looking for level 2 Annie, level 2 Lux, maybe a level 3 Syndra, or sorry, level 3 Nico. And maybe we get lucky, get a level 3 Syndra or Ari, but those are all very low chances of happening because the guy's fighting me for them. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, there's also another Void Brawler player. Um, so there's going to be someone competing with me on Belkaz. So there's not really too much to do here. Yeah, this is the guy right here. But he's looking for 3-star Cho'Gath, 3-star Belkaz. I can't really help that. And unfortunately, if you look over here... Um, we are the three people with the highest health, so there's no way I can wait for them to die. So after seeing that, I'm going to actually try to go to level 9, but I do find Soraka first so that I can play real units, because Poppy is not a real unit in the late game. Early game, she's one of the best units, but late game, she definitely does fall off. I'm thinking I need Mystic here as well, because I'm going to be facing the Star Guardian guy as well. So if I go to level 9, I probably want to add in like a Lulu here. Oh yeah, and when you do get Star Guardian spat, you run all six Star Guardians minus Poppy in like 99% of cases. As you can see here, Velkaz is pretty much cleaning up most of the fights, which is pretty fortunate for us. Alright, so on this carousel, what do we want here? I think Thieves Gloves is really good. The Static Shiv is also really good as well, because it gives us um, mana for our units. Same with Luden's Echo. Getting the Aurelia with the ZZ Rap portal might not be bad either, because that gives us another source of tankiness. I think the best item here is Luden's. I see here that the Star Guardian guy got really lucky. He has 8 Nikos and there's 1 on the carousel here, but for some reason 
he doesn't take it. I don't know why. Um, so I just go ahead and get the Ludens. That way I get to get more mana for my guys. Um, so I just pop that on Syndra. She has the lowest mana pool. I think she has 50 mana to, in order to cast her spell. So the sooner she casts her spell, the sooner everyone else casts her spell. So that's why I put the item on her. Yeah, if we look at this guy here, he's level 7, 39 health, 20 gold. So it's like you could fight someone when you're contesting a comp that can only support one player, but he said he didn't do that. I think that is a mistake on his part. He probably should have leveled up to 8 or 9 like how I did, especially since he was wind streaking before. Now it's too late for him. He's already too low now, so can't really econ back up. Um, so from here, I'm really just going to level 9. You can see that I'm 44 out of 66 now because I've just been passively putting my extra gold into levels. Um, so after that, I'm just looking for Lulu. Maybe even going Protector would be pretty interesting here. Um, Protector would give uh, Nico slightly more tankiness, and since she is my only tank, it does every bit of tankiness helps, and she's going to be able to get her cast off pretty often because she has Star Guardian. All right, so here we are at level 9. I think I need Soraka, so I do roll down a little bit, and I needed Lulu. Um, so I end up finding them, and once I find that, I stop rolling. Um, I do pick up the Vel'Kazes because even though the other Vel'Koz player is pretty high up, I I really want to keep that as my win condition, getting like a 3-star Vel'Koz because I have Nico on my bench. If you guys notice, I haven't used it yet because I ended up having to find the only unit that I was looking for, which was Vel'Koz. None of the other units really matter because they don't matter until I get um, 3 star which isn't going to happen this game because it's literally impossible to get 3-star Syndra and Nico since the other person found most of them already. Um, so unfortunate there because that means we were down like 3 gold or an item the entire game, um, which could really hurt me, but luckily we were able to find our Vel'Koz pretty naturally, um, so we didn't struggle too hard this game there. But every match, you do want to look out for Blitzcrank, so my Lux is pretty vulnerable, but I kind of want to keep Lux in a corner spot. But also I do a nice scout here where I out of silence um, pretty much his entire team there. So unfortunately we end up facing his Ghost, but we absolutely destroyed him because of that positioning. Yeah, whenever you have a Lux, you always want to corner her, and you still want to watch out for Blitzcranks. And the reason why you want to corner her is because her stun's unlimited range, and that's why it's so important to keep her like that. Um, so here, again, the best item is probably Static Shiv because that gives me mana, followed by Red Buff, just because Red Buff is uh, like it's just a good item because all the other ones are kind of useless. So as long as I apply Red Buff to one person, it's already better than all the other items. Um, so since I'm at 90 gold, or sorry, since I'm at level 9 already, it makes complete sense to roll down to 50 every turn to try to find some units. I could hoard my gold to wait for... Moon, DKM, and J Money to die because one of them has the voids, like this guy's the voids and this guy's the Star Guardians. I actually think waiting is better here. Okay, that's what I end up doing. Like, for my first instinct is to always roll at level 9 because your gold's literally sitting dead, but it makes sense that I held on to it here because they're both one death away from, from dying. Um, so I want to wait for them to die before rolling because the units will be back into the pool again. Alright, so Moon DKM died. I find the other Vel'Koz because of that. I, I skipped Lulu there. I know, it's just I was in the heat of the moment. Sometimes I skip things because I really want to roll down to get to Vel'Koz 3 because I have the Nico. Um, but sometimes I get careless like that. But here I am trying to do a speed run, essentially. But unfortunately, I do find the next Lulu, but um, not the Vel'Koz. But that, that's my bad, you know. I should have been more patient since... <sighs> It's hard for me to roll down like 70 gold in one turn. Um, so I find the other Vel'Koz there. We, we're also going right into the PvE round. But the thing is, I was panicking because I'm 29 life. And I just lost the most recent round right before that. So I don't want to lose once more and only have one life left. So I want us to have two lives going into the late game. Because it allows for me to survive one terrible fight RNG. But here again, since I'm 29 health, damage at stage 7 is 20 per turn. So if I get completely wiped out... I could potentially just lose right there, right? Most likely I wouldn't. I probably have two lives here in most cases, but I definitely do want to roll down because, again, I hate getting bad fight RNG and losing because of that, especially when I'm in a game where I'm able to pull out some wins. I roll down for the Vel'Koz here and um, just try to find everything. I do skip the Syndras because it's going to be too hard for me to find Syndra 3 at 25%. It definitely is possible, but... 
I have the I need to find Nico anyways, and I'd rather get that than get Syndra. So it could be argued I should complete my Syndra in order to remove the items from her. That might have been better as well. Because maybe Lux wants the hat, and then I keep the Ludens on the new Syndra. Um, so I Morello the Lux. Morello doesn't really do that much. It is a great item, but like Elkaz kills people so fast, so I don't really need, need that at all. Um, by the way, at the end of the game, always scout to see what your opponent's looking for and try to steal those units. Um, in this situation, I saw that he was looking for Echo, and that's why I ended up um, taking Echo before I eventually sold him because I'm one off Nico. If I wasn't one off Nico because I have the Nico's help there, I'd probably hold on to the Echo there, just FYI. But since I'm only one off an upgrade and he's pretty much uh, probably two big deaths away from losing or um, three minor ones, I want to pretty much find her as soon as possible. Um, let's take a look at what we want to do for positioning in the next fight. Um, we'll go ahead and explain that right now. So he is uncontested mech pilot. He should win every game, but I guess we high rolled pretty well here despite being contested. So what you want to do is you want to avoid his Shaco and his Kaisa with your Belkaz, and you also want to be able to blow them up. Another thing you don't want to do is to be grouped up for his mech because his mech does a big area of effect ability. So if you move your Nico to the back line to try to stun the Shaco and the Kaisa, you run a big risk of his big mech walking up to your team and then one-shotting everyone. I also have a Shroud of Silence here on my Nico, so I want to hit the Kaisa, I want to hit the big mech, or I want to hit Shaco. Any one of those would be pretty fine, preferably two of them. But most importantly, you want to move your Belkaz away from the Shaco so he doesn't run the risk of being one-shot. It's like a 50-50 chance for him to be one-shot, just because he, when he jumps, there are too many things to target. So sometimes he hits Belkaz, sometimes he doesn't if he's like perfectly aimed. But here I just do the like positioning trick where you click your unit, use R or Q to scroll over to your opponent, and then... You press spacebar really quickly to move your unit back where you want it, like I do there. So here I get a really good fight because I hit both his Kai'Sa and his Garen, and his Shaco's nowhere near any of my important units. Also keep in mind, Lulu's a great person to have against Assassins because she's always going to target them because Lulu always targets the closest person. Um, so that's pretty fortunate here. Let me slow down the fight here. As you can see, my Belkaz is pretty safe. We hit Kai'Sa with the... Crowd of Silence. I, I forgot what the actual name is, but she never even cast this fight, which is huge because she is a three-star three star unit. Um, and then I think my Lulu actually ults the Shaco here as well. Um, I do get the stun on him, um, which is really good, but yeah, I think, I think over here Lulu ends up ulting him, and then I'm able to clean up the fight after that. Um, Lulu, huge champion in the late game. Pretty much, she's she might be one of the best champions in the game um, as like a support. She'll never like solo carry a game, but there's always um, she pretty much counters every champion unless they have Quicksilver Sash. So here there are many options. There's no mana here. Mana is really what I'm looking for, but none of that there. I would have put a mana item on my Lulu 100%. Um, so the other options are going Jeweled Gauntlet or going the Protector Spatula. I think... Protector Spatula is better here because I already have full items on everyone, so Jeweled Gauntlet isn't really going to do anything for me. Um, I could put it on Syndra, maybe she just gets a lucky hit on the Shaco and maybe I win, but I don't even think she kills her at or kills him at level 2 Syndra right now. Because Shaco is 3 star, so he has so much health. Also, I steal the Fizz because I know he's going for Fizz 3 right now, and that's going to be really scary. I've never actually seen a full 3 star Garen until this game. Um, but I end up seeing it now. And yeah, you definitely want to put it on Lulu because she is the only person that matters. Syndra just doesn't matter anymore. So even though Syndra gets more cast, um, unfortunately, he gets the Fizz 3, even though I stole one of them from the pool. So that's going to be <laughs> really scary. I do make a mistake here. Remember how I said you don't want to put your Nico on the back line? Um, and that's because Garen's going to do a big area of effect ultimate. Well, I end up doing that here because <sighs> any... I know like Nico could have swapped spaces with Annie, but mentally when I press spacebar in the heat of the moment, I didn't want to put anyone on Annie square because I forgot where my Nico was. But I think that sacrifice would have been worth it because um, even though I end up getting the Kaisa here, if I had my Annie up front, Annie doesn't matter at all. So, um, but yeah, look at this. Garen's right in front of my Velkaz, and you'll see, even though I'm winning this fight completely, right? 
look at that ultimate. It just completely decimates my team because I made a positioning error. But that's why you always want to get a lot of health towards the end game because like you could either make a mistake or get bad fight RNG. I made a mistake here and rolling early and having like five less gold or whatever because you saved interest for one more turn really doesn't matter if you're not able to position properly or like hit anything with that five gold and I don't need to hit anything so that five gold just doesn't matter so I don't mind rolling earlier to try to like preserve my health earlier just for these types of reasons so after seeing that fight one thing I realized since my Belkaz is level three I think putting him in the corner is the best um, just whatever opposite of Shaco and Kaisa is because he'll be out of range of everything and as long as my Nico's in the front line he won't get blown up again like he did last fight so I think after that it's just pretty much GG from here. So I ended up just swapping him over there. I did make a mistake of not aiming my Shroud because uh, I hit Velkaz right now, or his Velkaz, which really doesn't do anything. He's just really playing it for the Sorcerer buff. But I think here it's fine because, again, Velkaz can just finally one-shot everything and then also be in complete safety. Um, so luckily we got the win there against the Solo Mech player. Again, Solo Mech is one of the easiest compositions in the game. It's the strongest composition, and it's the easiest, and if no one's contesting it, he gets something like 6-star Garen, uh, which does 5,000 damage on his ultimate in an area of effect. Um, but luckily, we're able to pull out the win here with the Belkaz 3. Um, again, what we did that was important was, even though we were contested, we waited until other people died, and instead of fighting for the units at level 7, we leveled up to level 8, then leveled up to level 9 in order to... Pretty much just improve our chances of winning the game. And then once the other person died, then we went in and found our Nikos. We went in and found our Velkaz. And since we're on the medium legends map, we're able to um, get to the super late game. But if we were on a normal map, the other people might die off faster. So it's kind of like a balance give and take. It really is dependent on the game. There's no set rule. But yeah, that's pretty much how you play Star Guardians, even when they're contested and you beat the mech player. At the end at the end of the day so to sum up important items here guardian angel quicksilver sash super super important you didn't see it this game but if anyone ever zephyrs your nico you just lose right away because you have no front line their enemy tanks walk right on your carries and you just you just die there's no going around that second thing is if you do get the star guardian spatula throw it on Velkaz, throw ap items on him quicksilver sash is really good on him too but if you don't have that you could have like a hat as well that would work as well. If you go Syndra carry, you want double Seraph's hat or like Seraph's double hat or like a defensive item. Any combinations of those would work on Syndra. And if you get three star Ari, you could throw your random items onto her. So remember all the random items on our Lux. If we had three star Ari, I'd throw it on Ari instead. But again, since she wasn't three starred this game, I throw it on the Lux because I like Lux's CC more. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, normally how you'd play this is level up to level 7, roll down to 50 every turn if you're uncontested, but everyone knows how to do that. If you want to know how to play while it is contested, rewatch this video and try to emulate what I did here. But yeah, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and of course smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.